Hey everyone, this video is going to be a little bit different from my usual ones, but I hope you still like it, and I really wanted to do it just because I think the Banu Merchant Man is so cool. So as you can probably see from the title, in this video I wanted to compare it to some other ships that have similar use cases, and the reason I wanted to do this is because it's on sale again, but we still don't have much more information on it. Actually, I don't think there's any new information, so... Before I start, I just want to be clear that this is all speculation, and I've also included a lot of my opinions in here. So you might not agree, but if you have different thoughts, I'd actually like to hear them in the comments, because a lot of the reason I made this video is because with the current stats of the Merchant Man, it seems to be in a weird situation. Okay, so I want to start by talking about the two ships that I'm going to make most of my comparisons to. So the Drake Caterpillar, which is cheaper, and the Crusader C2 Hercules, which is more expensive. Only the Caterpillar is in-game right now, and it's missing some functionality with its tractor beam not being enabled yet. Also, these ships aren't completely comparable because they have their own additional use cases, but they're all generally designed about cargo hauling. So the cat will eventually have that tractor beam, and it has all the side access cargo areas, which makes it a great piracy ship because you can load up someone else's cargo in space really easily with that easy access to the cargo bay. The C2 isn't in the game yet, but at least for the C variant of the Hercules lineup, I'd say its unique features would be its good aerodynamics, which will help it fly in atmosphere and it'll probably be the best out of these three in terms of atmospheric flight. And it also has the drive-through loading, so it has a rear and front ramp, which means it's very good at hauling around vehicles, and I think it's the only one of these that'll be able to carry stuff like the tank. We have even less info than these other two ships about the Merchant Man, but the one feature that I'm almost positive will be included is that it will have shops on board where you can sell stuff in a marketplace sort of setting since that's a very key part of the description to the ship. So all of this seems pretty reasonable, since they all have some overlapping capabilities and some unique ones, and are all priced somewhat similarly, but I'm about to get to why it's kind of confusing where the Merchant Man is at, in my opinion. So the first thing that confuses me is that it seems like there's really no alien tax on this. The Merchant Man is a ship made by the alien species called the Banu, and CIG usually has a pretty substantial markup on these alien ships just because of the cool factor, and also because they want to maybe kind of rare in the universe. So a good example of this is the Prowler, which is a small stealth drop ship, and it recently released at around $400. And it is a really cool ship, but the Valkyrie is more capable in every way except for stealth, and it's also a lot cheaper. But here with the Merchantman, I think it has at least similar capabilities to these other two ships, and possibly even more and it's priced in between them. So yeah, that's a little strange. So to illustrate the next topic, I went ahead and messed around in Photoshop, but I'm not that great at it, so it took me a while. So I'd really appreciate if you like this video. So this picture is one of the concept pictures of the Merchant Man, but I'm pretty sure it's from when it was still gonna be 100 meters, so for the initial concept. Right now on the site, it says it's gonna be 160 meters, but this one I measured the little images of people that they have in it and it would make more sense that this is the 100 meter version so ignore the people in this but i think the general layout and design of the interior like where everything is going to be could be somewhat representative of what the end product will be so here is the same picture but with the caterpillar overlaid on it and they're scaled correctly assuming their lengths are going to remain at 160 meters for the merchant man and about 112 for the caterpillar and I measured that just from the very tip to the very tail of each ship. So the first thing I want to talk about is just how big this ship is going to be if they don't make any major changes. At 160 meters, it's bigger even than the Carrick, and it's way bigger than the Caterpillar, especially when you consider how the Caterpillar is a slender sort of ship with its length being its biggest dimension by far. Its cargo area is pretty short, and the width, which you can't see in this orientation, is not much more than its height, so the Merchant Man is quite considerably bigger. If the layout on the Merchant Man stays the same though, it seems like it'll have similar cargo capacity to the Caterpillar, since that's the area that's designated as cargo in this mock-up. And it possibly could even have less, depending on how much space the shops take up. However, it's equally as likely that it could be higher capacity since in the process of scaling it up, they'll probably be able to use more of that front area. And also you have the fact that the Merchant Man is much wider than the Caterpillar. But I think this comparison is a good reference to how much cargo it will actually have, because right now the last figure that they gave was 3000, but that was with the old numbers system of how they calculated SU. So I think it'll probably be somewhere a little bit more than the Caterpillar and maybe even more than the C2. 
and at most it would be about a thousand SCU, but we don't really know anything for sure as of now. So here it is with the Hercules overlaid, and this is very speculative since neither of these ships are in game, but this is how they are relative to each other just based on their lengths, and the Hercules right now is listed at 94 meters long. And here it is with all three overlaid. So I know ship size doesn't necessarily always correlate to capability, but to me it just seems like the pricing doesn't line up, even considering that. If you ignore the alien tax, which would normally add something like $100, the ship is still quite a bit larger than these other two. And even though we don't know all that much, it's pretty safe assumption to say that it will be at least on par with the other two in terms of cargo trading, and it will also have that shop feature. So this is what I'd like you guys' opinions on, because it seems to me like something doesn't line up. Maybe it's going to be like the Carrick, and this is going to eventually go up in price once it gets closer to being put in the game. And the fact that it's still this price means it's a pretty long ways away. And I think this is the most likely. And from what I can see, the only other option is that it gets nerfed, but I doubt they do that, since the people who have been waiting years for this ship would be really upset by that, I feel. But yeah, it just seems strange to me that even without including some of the other features that people like to speculate on, like its blockade running capabilities that CIG had included in some descriptions, and the fact that it might be able to dock with Banu Defenders, and all sorts of other stuff like that, it still seems like a really good deal for this ship. So yeah, I don't know, but if you guys have thoughts on this, I'd be interested in hearing them especially with the lack of information on this ship. I'm hoping they'll say some more about it later this week, but as of right now, this is really all we know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.